Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jacob, Silas, Annabel, and Sasha, on this day, the day of your confirmation, we're going to have a little chat just like the many that we've had over the years sitting around the table down the hallway. You know, we've covered quite a bit of the Bible in our time together. And the place that I want to start this morning is in the book of John. It's right after Jesus makes his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, what we celebrated on Palm Sunday. You know, there were people hailing him as king with loud hosannas. And there were also people who were plotting to kill him, who wanted this Jesus problem to go away once and for all. And so we find it there in chapter 12, verse 42 and 43. John writes, he says, Nevertheless, many, even of the authorities, believed in him. But for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. It's one thing to believe something, but it's another thing to confess it. You know, a belief can remain private, safely locked away in our hearts and minds, protected from the judgment and criticism of others. And with our beliefs tightly contained, we get to control the narrative. We get to control what happens to us. We get to avoid ridicule and conflict. We get to a, avoid judgment. But once we confess something, there is no going back. Everything changes. Our confession is out there and becomes inseparable from who we are from that point onward. There's no safety no privacy, nothing to hide behind. No, a confession exposes you and leaves you at the mercy of those who hear what you confess because you're no longer in control of what happens after that. See, the Jewish authorities in John chapter 12 understood exactly how this works. You know, John tells us that many of them believed and actually who were part of the synagogue in Jerusalem, they actually believed in Jesus. They believed in who he was, what he was doing, and that he was the promised one. They knew the prophecies of Isaiah and all the prophets inside and out, and they were convinced that Jesus was the fulfillment of those promises, that he was indeed the Christ, the anointed Messiah. And yet... They said nothing. They remained silent before their peers and colleagues. They were afraid of what others might say or do if their beliefs were known. They believed, but they would not confess. They were not ready to give up their status in the synagogue, their privilege, their easy life, their safety. They were not willing to give up their control. Why? Well, John tells us, he says, they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. And that's something we can relate to. We like the glory that comes from man. We like the acceptance, we like the social status, we like the popularity, we like the notoriety, we like the likes, we like the retweets, we like when people like us. And to get those things, to keep those things, we are tempted to remain silent. We are tempted to allow our beliefs to go without confession without consequence. But the Christian faith isn't a list of things that you believe. It's something that you confess. 
We put it all out there where there is no safety, where there is nothing to hide behind. We relinquish our control and put ourselves at the mercy of the one true God who does hear our confession. And today you have the opportunity to do just that. Today is the day when you stand before your God and before your church to make a bold confession, to make your beliefs public to put it all out there and tell the world exactly where you stand. Or or to to echo what the Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, where he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of salvation for everyone who believes. But this confession isn't about putting you at the center of attention. This isn't about adding to your list of accomplishments. No, you're here today to confess because your parents believed in the promise that God had for you and for their kids in the waters of holy baptism. That in those waters, God was claiming you, washing you, cleaning you, drowning you, renewing you, saving you, making his dwelling in you, gifting you with the very faith you are confessing this morning. See, all of this is God's work in you, a loving Father calling you to himself through the power of his word and spirit. A father who began his good work in you and your baptism and will continue that work until the day of the resurrection and the new creation. And as you make this confession this morning, know that you are not alone. You have a church that stands with you. The same church who voices gave answer to the questions for many of you on the day that you were baptized. The voices that you hear all around you every Sunday throughout the divine service as we speak the truth through liturgy and hymns. Together we all confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. Together we confess our Christian faith in the words of the creeds. Together as we eat and drink from the cup of the Lord's Supper, We confess that we need and have received the very forgiveness that Christ won for us on the cross. So your confession, your confirmation, is a reminder to everyone here this morning of the solemn vows that we made before God and the church in our own confirmations. We've been there, and sometimes, very oftentimes, we need to be reminded of that too. To hear again, of the, be reminded of the vows that we made to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully, vows to live according to the word of God, vows to continue steadfast in our confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it. Why? Because you have a God who has already confessed his love for you. On the cross, he gave up his safety. On the cross, he had nothing to hide behind. On the cross, he was left at the mercy of his Father who could show him none because he wanted to share his glory with you. He wanted you, the world, to know just how much he loves you, that he is here for you, that he is for you, and no one can be against you, that no matter where your life turns, he is never ashamed of you. On the cross, God confessed his love for you, and that love cannot be silenced. It cannot be taken away. You can always look to the cross to see that love, but but he didn't stop there. He has given you the Holy Spirit, and that's what we're also celebrating here today at Pentecost. And In the gospel reading earlier, Jesus promised that he would send the helper, 
that after he ascended into heaven, the Holy Spirit would come with truth and would guide you in all truth. And the Spirit has done just that in your life. You are here today because the Spirit has been at work in your life in ways that you didn't even realize. And His work is far from finished. There will be days ahead of you when the world will try to confuse the truth that you are about to confess, where people or circumstances may pressure you into silence or where you are unsure what it means to confess this truth when the world offers so many reasons to doubt it. But you are never alone. The same Spirit who breathed life into those dry bones with the prophecy of Ezekiel, the same Spirit who breathed life into the church with a mighty wind and tongues of fire at Pentecost, the same Spirit who breathed life into you in the water and the word of your baptism, that Spirit is with you always, and He will always guide you in truth. He will be with you as you continue reading the Scriptures. He will be with you every morning, reminding you of who you are as a baptized child of God. He will be with you, pointing you back to the cross and all that Jesus did for you there. He will be with you even this morning as you stand before your God and before your church and confess as you put it all out there. But with Him, there is power. With Him, you have peace because the Spirit brought you to this point. He's always with you and He will continue to guide you in all truth. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.